Welcome to Face to Facts. It's great to have everybody here once again. I am Nick Face, the one and only, and we have uh, Phil Healy, who's all pinked out, and we have Tom, who's all, I guess, sun's out, guns out mode today. Um, I have to tell you, I couldn't be more pissed off. I couldn't be more outraged at the embarrassment that's happening at Fenway Park currently with your 2021 Boston Red Sox. I've been harping on them. I've been saying how great it's been to have enjoyable baseball, but this team right now is an absolute dumpster fire. And I cannot stress enough, this collapse happening right now, I'm even making a bold statement on this right now, will go down as a worse collapse than the 2011 chicken and beer Red Sox. Heard it here first. Heard it here first. Don't come at me and tell me, oh, well, you told me so. It's going to happen. This team is a wrecking ball right now. Let's talk about it. I don't know who wants to go first, but that's just I mean, my overall take. With I, the can't, I can't really – can't really watch the game, so I don't really have a lot to say on the matter. Um, so, but I don't know. They're starting to slide. I mean, this is this is usually the case for them, though. You know, the All Star break hits, and they're either slumping before the All Star break, and they start heating up after, or they're doing great before, and then start slumping after. So, I'm not really too surprised by it. Uh, hopefully they can pick it up soon. They kind of need to if they want to make the playoffs. But yeah, that's about all I have to say on it. Phil, do you have anything you want to add? Anything that you've seen? Uh, just pitching. Uh, pitching and fielding. I mean, I guess offense too, but I mean, that's, you know. <laughs> but if you take care of two, the other, you know, take care of any of the two of the three, then you don't need as much as, you know, the other the third no that's obvious but i don't know man it, it sucks because they was it like nine of the last 12 or something kind of nuts they've lost kind of crazy but yeah I, I, i'm hoping they pick it up but this is actually i mean i guess that's up there with the collapse i mean i will say this i i, I don't think it's as crazy as a collapse as the um chicken and beer red Sox because they had uh so much more talent and potential and they were just coming off I think they were, well, excuse me, two years removed or a year removed from being in the um, ALCS, uh, I think. So 2009, they made the playoffs, played the Angels. I remember going because I, I was at the last game, game three of that series. So they were there in the playoffs at that point. 2010, they did not make the playoffs. 2011 was the year where it was Papelbon's last year. Yeah. It was Jacoby Ellsbury's last year. It was, I think Kobe it was Air Attack in Wakefield's last year, too. I think so, too. I was just about to say, I think it was Tex last year. I believe and it was. It, yeah. And that collapsed in Baltimore. I remember that it was a battle between the Rays and the Red Sox at the time. And the biggest issues on that team were Adrian Gonzalez. Oh, I don't want to play in the primetime game. We play too many baseball games. Um, and then it was Josh Beckett. Josh Lode Beckett, I mean, he put on at least 30 pounds within the season with the beer and the chicken. I think that was overblown, but it was kind of just the Yeah, I don't know if he put on 30 pounds. He put on a good, like he he weighed more and they just Matt were Happy. lax. So, well, yeah, I mean, kind of. Well, he, he deserved a little bit of it. I got my I mean, he, money. I got my well, money. Also, I don't need he got pitch. his championship too. He got a championship got with ring. us. 2007? Yeah, 2007 is when they won that. They won that ring, right? 2007? 2007, they won that. And he pitched well. They came of, down. You know, Beckett, Beckett was one of the better pitchers that we had. Big gamer. Never yeah. really was that, like, appointment TV kind of thing. But Texas no. tough guy mentality. Did a great job when he was there. It just kind of went downhill. And then 2012 was the year of the big trade with Gonzalez and Beckett. And I think it was like Nick Kuto, wherever it was, and freed up a bunch of money, which enabled the 2013 Red Sox to be the Cinderella story of the year. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're forgetting Carl Crawford from the 2011. Carl Crawford, too. That's back crap. 
Well, he wasn't a horrible player. He just overpaid, massively overpaid for the guy. Yep. It was just Never such a was crazy. A fit for Boston. Never yeah. was a fit. This team, though, I think the biggest problem with the Red Sox is they peaked way too soon. So it got people like this idiot right here sucked in. Oh, we believe here it comes. This team is so much better than we thought. Woohoo! And guess what? Wrong. I mean, you had to. You had to know it was If I was liking Matt Barnes, that's a problem, folks. That's a problem. Your all star is a piece of crap. He always has been. He's a has been. I'm sorry, but little old me over here, it's a freaking block from a professional athlete. Mentally, that's that's kind of insane. If I got to somebody like that, little old me over here, it's like I'm on this, let, let me just take them all out. But it says a lot about the person, their, their mental toughness in the game. If you can't take the criticism here, in Boston, pack your effing bags and go play for the freaking Florida Marlins where they only have like two fans that show up. Like, come on. The problem here is all these players way overachieved at the start. And when the second half hit, Heim Bloom said to everybody else on that team, you aren't good enough. You're not good enough. I'm not going to go invest in this team because you guys are nothing but a bunch of wannabes or throwaways, or just career year journey people, and I'm not going to mess up my farm system for, for potentially a playoff thing. So I don't blame Bloom 100% here, but what I do blame here is just not attacking the trade deadline a little bit better. You got no pitching. Your starting pitching has been an absolute disaster since the start of the season. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear, oh, we got plenty of arms. F that. F that but, nonsense. But, but <laughs> your bullpen saved your bacon because your starters can't go more than five effing innings in a major league baseball game. Well, it won't That's now that terrible. Perez is in the bullpen. Oh, yeah. Perez day comes every day now. I can't wait for that. Saw that crap last night, too. I... I'm very passionate towards the Red Sox. We all know that. I love baseball. Baseball's been in my blood for years and years and years. And when I see an embarrassment of riches on a field with these spoiled, rotten bums who won't go out there and battle it out and pull out these wins, that says a lot about the character, motivation, and the gumption of this team. They are a sack of potatoes right now. And I give actually a lot of criticism to Alex Cora because there's been no meeting. There's been no get together to get these guys on the same page because they have fallen off that roller coaster and they, they are tail spinning out of control right now. You are two and 10 in the last 12 games. That is unacceptable. So if I'm the one that needs to light the fire under them, I'm doing it now. You gutless bums, wake the F up because there's a month and a half of baseball still to play, and I want playoff baseball. So there you have it. Yeah, they need to wake up. Someone needs to do something. I wish I had a torch right here. Because I, well, I think it was it. I remember when Bogarts talked about when they lost, I uh, was it, two or three in a row to the when they got swept. Or right before they got swept by the Rays. Yep. And it's like, yeah, something's got to happen. And like, you can see it on his face. I mean, he's one of those guys, no matter what happens to that team, like he's one of those guys like, oh, yeah, he's always doing something. Like, well, he's never... always consistent. You, yeah. you know you can rely on him. I want to share with you, know. you a tweet that happened last night. This wasn't a bad one. I do have to say I blame last night's game for Dave O'Brien. I will say that. I do blame the game for him. I am. I'm sick of him. He is an absolute boob on the announce for an announcing. Oh, look! Here comes here comes uh, uh, Garrett Whitlock. He's got a 116 ERA. Hasn't been scored on in years. Well, 
What do you think happens? Shut your mouth, guy. The tweet was. Came from Alex Spear from the Boston Globe. Here it was. Garrett Whitlock. I did not learn quick enough from the inning. This was the seventh inning when he gave up the lead. Xander Bogarts told Whitlock that the Rays, after a few batters, were ambushing fastballs. But Whitlock says he should have seen it earlier. What's wrong with that statement, guys? I'm not going to say anything else. What's wrong with that statement? Uh, the fact that Xander was able to pick that up. Okay. What else is wrong with that statement? That your pitcher, your pitcher obviously hasn't done his research on the the lineup of the race. Yeah, that's another thing. But I even think of something even bigger. Bill, any any idea where I might be leading to? I did mention uh, this person's oh. name from 2011, who was his last year. I don't know if that. Might oh, Veritech. Yeah. What is he? What is that position that Veritech played? Oh, just oh, how like oh, just the catcher not doing their job or whatnot, or just. Well, I mean, that's more to Tom's point, too, to be honest. Yeah, in a way, it was definitely yeah. from that. But my biggest takeaway here is you have Jason Veritek as your bench guy guru or something within the team. A catcher who calls the game for the most part, not knowing the situation and not knowing to talk to his pitcher regarding what was happening in the seventh inning and make an adjustment. That's a problem. Hmm. And for whatever reason in Boston, for some reason, Christian Vasquez gets tiptoed around criticism. I don't know why it is. I don't know why he doesn't get enough flack for his play. Well, because the catcher's wise are going to attack him. So... For whatever reason, for, for what I've picked up, I guess a lot of other people have picked up now on Twitter and other people out there. Christian Vasquez should be on full-out blast mode. He is having a horrendous season this year, and it's impacted the pitching, in my opinion. His bat has been even embarrassing enough for AAA, okay? But the mental mistakes this guy is making, and he's getting away with it. Like, I don't know if he, if Cora's or if he's got pictures of something and Cora's just like, oh, don't worry. I'm going to play you all the time. I'm not going to put you in a timeout. You're going to just keep going and trotting out there. I don't know what it is. But this is from the generation of what we saw with Veritech or even my father's generation with the Carlton Fisk. Heck, I'll even say uh, it was, um, what the heck was his name? Rich Gedman back in the years when he was a catcher um, for the Red Sox. I'll even throw David Ross's name in there. You have a professional lazy bum behind the plate continuing to get at bats and play day in and day out with any sort of rep, or uh, any, any sort of like uh, uh, punishment, basically. You know, he Alex Cora is continuing to play him. Granted, they don't really have another option, Kevin Pilecki, but I don't like him as a catcher. See, I like Pilecki more as like first base or DH because he's actually hitting the ball. So you got to put him in the lineup from that. But there's no more free pass here with Vasquez. I don't want him back there and catching anymore. I hope the Red Sox make an adjustment for next season because Christian Vasquez is not it. Go out and find a catcher. I don't care if he hits 240. If he's at least throwing guys out in the base pass, knows the game, calls a great game, so they can get their pitching staff back together. I think Vasquez is a big reason why this pitching staff has struggled all season too. I really do. I really, really believe that. And he's not really a great mentor for the no, young he's catchers not. like Pawecki. He thinks he's Ricky Henderson on the effing bases out there. Um, Hello? You're a slow dude. The reason why you have all these bases is because these, these teams are shocked that you're even stealing. And then he thinks he can put the Jets on and get the, the last, this last week with him on the bases. I don't know if you saw the game up in Toronto. Getting picked off, trying to stretch something into a three. It's, it's horrible. Horrible. So get your acts together, guys, because I was enjoying this season really a lot. And you are just ruining my summer right now. Like, let's go. Um, 
Speaking of which, the other teams in the AL East, you got the Yankees, who got Anthony Rizzo, who is absolutely torturizing a baseball. Boy, Yankees are laughing in the Red Sox face right now. Couldn't, couldn't they use a first baseman like that? My God. You got uh, the, the, the Blue Jays, who went out and got Berrios, and they got a great guy in the bullpen, Brad Hand. The Blue Jays look great. The lineup scares the crap out of me. And then the Rays are the Rays. I mean, they, they are they are tough. They are one competitive team. I still don't know how they do it because they don't have really any star power. But give them some kudos. They have they have a spark in them that's hard to put out. So I hope they turn a corner here. I hope me calling them out. Sometimes when I do this, it just does it. I don't know why. Guess these feeds go right into the locker room or something. But if this is bulletin board material, have at it. You want to show me up? Go show me. Go show me that you want to play baseball. I'll tell you, if I was the manager, I'd light them up right now. Um, anything else on the baseball stuff after I got all my anger and frustration up? That was built up for like 10 days there. That was a build up. Needed to get it out of me. It's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. Sorry. Sorry for my venting. Sometimes we oh, do right. something. How I'd rather hear than Twitter, I guess. <laughs> my poor Twitter has been abused lately. <laughs> I haven't been in Twitter jail because people understand where I'm coming from. No one's saying you're an idiot. You're a moron. Everybody's agreeing with me, which is scary. Well, I think the vast. I got invited to is... the Bastards of Baseball podcast the other day. I'm oh, like, you did? I'm like, no, nah, I'm not a bastard. Well, why not? Well, yeah. you're just a bastard for a day. Yeah. You just go and just relax. <laughs> it's a vacation. It's a bastard vacation. Little old me over here with all the all the outrages from people coming unbelievable well i know i why well, I, I just want to touch back on the vasquez stuff i think for his whole career it seemed and because how many years he's been here for we've been here since 2015 four, yeah 15 yeah i was gonna yeah uh he's been in the in in the red Sox operations for a while but it, he still feels like new blood in some weird way but i mean he shouldn't it's weird isn't it? yeah yeah it is boy i think that's i think that that happens and maybe it's because of, you know, us getting older, the change of the new guard and all that stuff. But yeah, I don't know if he's not getting that criticism and sometimes other, you know, people, it also, because I don't think the expectation, what is the expectation for him? I mean, what was realistically set up? The average. I, yeah. mean, I think part of the reason is, is because we've seen peak, you know, peaks and bursts of it. I just yeah. look at him and think, number one, he's out of shape. Cause if you look at him from past years, he just doesn't look the same. He is getting older. You know, for age, sometimes catchers break down as they get older. Could this be on the decline? Could be a reason why. I think it's because we've seen glimpses of his greatness. I even it's weird to say the word great with him, but he's done a serviceable job. But what we've seen this year, because of what he's done recently in his career, you kind of have to hold him to that expectation. And it's been nothing short of just blah and not – the, not the player that it, they should have and expect. So that that's that's where I was looking at from that point. Um, I do want to transition and actually turn the page here and talk to Phil here about uh, basketball because uh, I don't know if you're hey, excited about it. this uh, Dennis Schroeder move. Schroeder. 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 Just think of Schroeder's box. The yeah. the physics um, term. Or not term, but a uh, paradox. And the other but, thing uh, I want to mention too is Tatum gets the, gets the gold. So he does. Him and him that. and uh, Durant and uh, Zach Levine and all them, which is, I mean, that U.S. Olympic team was a lot more loaded than than you think. But also that France team was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't, you know, Rudy Gobert is a bad, bad man. And uh, with, yeah. and I think I think I said it last time, but uh, it's so weird because they're. You can see a lot more aggression and a lot more kind of aggression from the big guys, yep. but a little backing off from the smaller guys around the hoop because you could kind of do whatever. You could goaltend to do a lot of stuff that you can't do in NBA rules. That was kind of a fun, weird thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and Gobert took advantage of that. He played for France, and that's who the U.S. played in the, the, the final uh, game, just uh, if you were wondering, if you didn't put the pieces together. But, yeah, Schroeder, Dennis Schroeder. Uh, starting point guard for the Lakers, who turned down an $84 million extension. Didn't want to play with LeBron, huh? Well, Love I was that or, or thought he could get more money. I mean, that's the thing, too. And he kind of – and when they said, okay, well, you know, go pound sand, and they signed – and they traded for Russell Westbrook, which is a whole other bag of bones. 
uh, he's like, okay, I'm left with the hanging with, uh, you know, he was left hanging with the bag. Right. And so he had to find somewhere and uh, not a lot of places needed point guards. That's kind of how it looked. And then, you know, he signed with the C's, which for, for like the mid-level a extension. nice veteran kind of move, which they needed. I, I listen, they the last two years, they've been signing uh, <laughs> old Hawks guards whom I like. And Jeff Teague won a championship with the, the Bucks just recently when we dropped him. Uh, he the minor. He was a decent factor in, in some of those games in the playoffs. But listen, I like Schroeder. Schroeder's a quick guy. He goes to the basket. Uh, he can dish the ball a little bit, but he's also like he'll drive to the basket a lot. And he'll be he's it's not going to be like he won't he'll be able to play back to back games as much yeah. as I love Kemba Walker. And we all wish he was a player. He was even in like the last couple of years in Charlotte, even because I think Kemba played a realistic. He played two years here. His yeah. first year, year here was pretty good and the end of it was pretty good but he also got a little injured at the end and that would that's what led to pretty much this past year of him not being able to play a lot yeah not being able to get it because you didn't really have him like he didn't really have the team together in a lot of ways so hopefully with Schroeder this is someone who can you know knock on wood doesn't get isn't really as far as I know it doesn't have an injury history but um I think part of what I like about him is dependability he's been with somebody and other organizations uh, that have won. So I think that that helps with a culture that the Celtics are trying to get back, which they've lost. And I think having that leader type, I almost look at, look at this as like a Rondo kind of sign. Yeah, no, way, I, I agree that. Like a veteran that kind of been around the block that knows the system. That's why I also... I. You know how I am with the Celtics sometimes. It's I'm a fair weather fan when it comes to it. I'll be honest and everything with it. But I think that there's a lot of optimism right now because of the new coach, I am Madoka, who's coming in that's gonna try and get this team back on the map here. Oh, and you nailed that pronunciation. I'll give you that. You may, well, I've better worked than on I do. my my uh, you know, I am a communications major. I've been practicing. You've been working, been working on your Nigerian two thousand three in some sort of area yeah, of expertise. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, that's one thing that I will say that I think is going to make the environment more player friendly when it comes to getting people to want to come here to play in Boston. Cause I think that took a major hit last year with the Durant and the Kyrie crap with the water bottle getting thrown. Now you got a coach who is an African American. No, not saying that Brad Stevens was any kind of signal fire of anything. Like oh, I thought that, you were going to say not to say that Brad wasn't African American. I'm like, oh wait, he was. And I'm like, oh no, no, he wasn't. Oh no, go ahead. Sorry. But Inside. anyways, yeah. he felt I he think, had the heart. I think a lot of it has to do with making an environment where these basketball players want to come and play. Yeah. You know, we don't want that label on the Celtics as a racist basket. That's horrible because that's not who we are, especially. Look at Bill Russell, for example. I mean, you're tarnishing the legacy of what the Celtics are from doing well, stupid things with your fans and the whole way the Celtics have looked in the past like six months has not been very good. Trying to lure free agents and people wanting to exit and leave out of here. It just looks like it looks horrible. So well, I'm I think, hopeful yeah. that the that the culture changes. Yeah, I think it will. Uh, with the Doka, I think he'll I mean, he's been on record and he actually, he was been on record and saying he wants to push Tatum and, and Brown. Yep. And he is, uh, was coaching at, uh, he was one of the assistant coaches behind Popovich at uh, not only at San Antonio, but uh, for the Olympics. So he, he was there uh, kind of with uh, Tatum a little bit. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking, they shed a lot of fat and they're shedding a little bit more fat. Tremont Waters is gone. They have some, these other players. All the turkeys are out of here. Well, not all of them, but a good amount. And Tristan Thompson's out. And Ennis Cantor is back. Who well, I was a fan I like, of Cantor. I like that. I like that. I like, yeah, no, he's a he's a good player. Uh, and he's also he seems like a decent guy, a locker room guy. Yep. Um, but I they need to build a little more. But I also think if they even have just their core, and I you know you call me a homer, but I, I think Naismith showed you. Aaron Naismith showed you a lot of stuff towards the end of last year when he was healthy enough to kind of be with the team, and he was a rookie who they had signed. Uh, who was a draft pick who was, I think, behind Pritchard or like well, either drafted before or right. It was a first rounder, either right before Pritchard or right after they had two first rounders, I think in 2019 when they picked. Uh, but 
you know what it's uh, or 2020 i believe so listen i'm um i'm excited to see a team that's congealed and together and will play yep. and that's kind of the thing and as, to your point nick i think that's First the, the culture year. will change uh, well I yeah play. i want to see yeah what they and it was just kind of it was a pain in you know what? And I was like, well, they made it to the playoffs great. And there are a lot of people who made good points about maybe they should have just not made the playoffs at all. And that would have been better for the team. But you know what? Uh, this is where we are. And well, let's see what happens. You know, you got to you know, see where they go. Uh, Tom, on the Bruins front, I want to just go really quickly and say that the David Krejci era, in my opinion, and what Bruce Cassidy and some of the other players have said is not over. The door no. is open. I, I mean – with the statement that he made, it seems like he he will come back at some point. He just wanted to play in front of his family and friends and uh, give, like. give them the give them a chance, give them a chance, give them a chance to see how he plays and you know how you know show them what he can do and all that. Um, I think he probably you know will come back and he probably won't play for an extended amount of time here, but he'll probably retire as a Bruin from the sport of hockey. I think it would be a great mid-season addition to the team that probably would love his veteran leadership spot on that second line. I think it's still his. And I think it gives the Bruins also a chance to see what they can do without him to start. Because let's be honest here. I mean, he's old. He's 35. We're going to be 36. Th that era is coming to an end, folks. That Bergeron, Martian, Krejci, Rask. It's all coming to an end. But I think if something's needed, we may get a chance to see maybe one last time if they can get over this hump. The other thing I wanted to say, too, is I think the door has also remained open for Rask, even with the addition of the new goaltender that they signed. They want to see how we heal, and they want to see how things come back where, much like with Krejci, the door's still open. So we'll see how that all goes there. I don't want to mention any football because that's coming up soon. Well, I have two other hockey oh. things. All right, go ahead on hockey. I'm just going to um, for you. Go ahead. Bruce Cassidy was named assistant coach for the Olympic for the Canadian Olympic hockey team in 2022, um, which you know pays dividends to how good of a coach he is because it's not you know the easiest thing to become a any part of an Olympic hockey team. I've liked Bruce Cassidy ever since he's been with the Bruins. I like him. Yep. No, I think a lot of people have. I don't think there's a lot of people that have a lot of issues with him. Um, and the other thing is uh, Tony Esposito passed away the other day. Uh, Phil Esposito, the brother. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what I thought. So um, our condolences go out to the Esposito family and uh, we wish them you know, all the best from that point. Again, we're not going to go with football. Last thing I want to mention with you guys, totally unrelated to our wonderful land of uh, sports, Jeopardy has their new host. Let's talk about it. So the new host of the syndicated daily Jeopardy show is Mike Richards. He was the second host, second guest host that they uh, had after uh, Ken Jennings in the guest host kind of hierarchy. I was a Ken Jennings guy. I would have liked him to have gotten it, but the best thing about the Mike Richards choice is pretty good. He's got the experience, so I think that that's going to be a good fit um, for specials and primetime Jeopardy kind of things. Goes out to Big Bang neuroscientist. Um, excuse me for if I mispronounce her name. Mayim, uh, what's her name, Phil? Mayim. Uh, oh, I don't know. For uh, Jeopardy? I'll look it up. Do you know the names? Huh? My, uh, oh, Maya Bialik? Maya yeah. Bialik? Yeah, it's Maya Bialik. Um, she will be the... Uh, Lossom, she did a great as job. As... She did a great job as a guest host on it. But I think... Oh, they have two hosts. Oh, I see. I actually give I'm just waking up. pictures a home run on this move. And the reason I do this is because we're in a society here with trying to balance you know, the female and the male roles of these typically prominent roles over the years that have been more male driven. I think this is a great image look for Jeopardy. I think it was, I think it makes them look really good on their part. And I think for fans, I think they're going to like the move. You know, you could have said it could, it should have been Ken Jennings. I understand with that, but I also think 
from the rumor that I heard is that Ken Jennings didn't want the full-time host. So you, know, you kind of got to pick and choose on that battle. So I, I give it an A. I don't know what you guys do. Yeah, I'm all for it. Uh, I haven't watched Jeopardy in forever. Uh, I was a fan of the LeVar Burton move, but I also heard that he didn't test well. No, he didn't. So, I mean, like, if he did, if he was stale, like, you know, you can't, you only go so far with wanting someone to do it if they, and if it doesn't work out, it's like, yeah, well, it wasn't, you know, wasn't that good. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm cool. I, listen, I am a guy, I'm not a traditionalist. There's you're some a, things. You're, you're very simple. Yeah, well, sure. Uh, well, I, but I also, I just, I'm not, I change doesn't bother me in a sense. Uh, but I am open to certain things and uh, this looks like it could be interesting. could be fun. Like if something's going to be a lot more fun then I'm down for it. So yeah, why not? Anything to add, Tom? No, I mean, I, I kind of like it. Like you said, it's <laughs> Screw a, it. yeah, sorry, no. sorry. And of course, you can't mention Sorry, Tom. without, um, you know, mentioning Alex Trebek's name. You know, you really can't replace that man. Legend. No, no. It takes two people to replace him. How about that? There As you go. Uh, irreplaceable. All right. That'll do it here for another episode of Face the Facts. We will see you again next time. And hopefully my hatred outburst today on the blast mobile of the Boston Red Sox comes together. And this freaking team wakes the hell up. I'm going to the game on Friday, so hopefully. They... Oh, that is just so wonderful to you. We... Well, you miss uh, you miss Chris Sale by a game, I think, right? See you next. Yeah, Sale Sale will be back in the next week or so. So maybe that's the spark they need. I know for one, this spark is out. So we will see you next time on another episode of Face the Facts. Goodbye.